Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. You made it through another week. Today we're going to do something, a short video, but just a, I want to talk about hobbies, you know? I woke up today and I was so reminiscent about years back when I was growing up. Uh, we were all growing up in the 60s and 70s. Two things I couldn't do without, and uh, that was food, <laughs> I love to eat, and hobbies. Uh, I'm telling you, when I was a kid, we had a couple hobby shops. We had a nice one up the street, but we had a big one in Flushing called Aqua Pet Hobby Den. And uh, it was a big hobby shop and they had all kinds of hobbies. And when you went in there, there was model airplanes hanging from the ceiling. And and uh, they had model trains and everything you can possibly imagine they had. And slot cars. I was into every hobby that uh, that was there. I think uh, at one time or another, I was always going back to that store and, and buying something different. Model kits, plastic kits, balsa kits. It was just so much fun. There was so much to do. And as a kid, all I kept thinking about it. And when I was in school, I wasn't paying attention. I should have been, but I wasn't paying attention. I was daydreaming about uh, after school, what was I going to do? And was I going to build something else? Or was I going to go down to the park and fly some model airplanes? And I just love it. I still do. I still get a kick. I love all kinds of hobbies. So Today I said, uh, let's talk about a hobby that probably many of you haven't heard of, or some of you old timers did. Uh, a good friend of the show, and also a member of the, uh, the tool meet that we go to, is big into tether cars. And I said, there's something that you don't usually see or hear of, tether cars. These were little cars, small model cars, back in the big in the 30s, 40s, 50s, homemade usually. And um, these were cars that were tethered to a cable and would race around a round track. Now, there weren't too many tracks around uh, back in, you know, there used to be more, but uh, now there's only a few left. But there's one in Long Island, not far from me, a nice track that's uh, still out there. But uh, these guys race these cars and uh, they do it to, you know, kind of racing against the clock. And it's just, uh, you know, if you like messing with mechanical things and engines and motors and it's just a lot of fun, something to do. And you know what's nice about a, a hobby club is that, you know, when you go there, it's not so much, you know, dealing with the hobby. It's, you know, you get to meet some people that are into have similar interests and enjoy, you know, doing things, working with their hands and building things. And, you know, it's always a lot of fun like that. So uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, the tether cars when I was uh, growing up in the 70s, um, they Cox was a uh, a manufacturer that was making a lot of 049 that's a size motor uh they would make a lot of these small engine uh motor uh cars airplanes control line airplanes um dune buggies drag racers funny cars boy cox was a cool i mean they had everything so uh I always liked to, the, those, they had a Jeep. My buddy had a Jeep, Richie. He used to run the Jeep in his backyard. We used to go and just all these cool things that they had. And uh, you, you got to play with the motors and you got to tweak it up and, and try and it was just something we did. So let me show you a couple here that I okay, have. Okay, here's one of my hobby rooms. I had to, uh, <laughs> I had to get my Larry light because it's a little dark in here. Remember these kits? Remember making these kits? Here, see it's some of the planes. Some of my radio control planes that I used to make in uh, up here. You could see some of the other ones up here. And this is a biplane, nice one, you know. All different airplanes, gliders, different things. Here's some old skateboards, vintage skate. Look at that old TV, a battery powered TV. Remember that? And uh, obviously some the old vintage radios and things like that. I got a lot of stuff packed away here. Let me uh, let me show you this cool copter, this electronic copter. Okay, this isn't that old, but how cool is that, huh? Remember this? Remember Verdi Bird? I used to have, I used to love that thing, Verdi Bird, when I was a kid. I still have one. Uh, this thing here was a little helicopter that you would pick up these men here or whatever. And, you know, you see how that helicopter, and obviously the box art was really cool, wasn't it, back then? Showed you how to use it and all the things, but 
Just the kind of things you get when you were 10 years old, you'd get for your birthday or something. I, I love this Now, stuff. in the 70s, Cox was putting out a whole line of uh, different cars that ran off these small motors here. Okay, now uh, this one here is uh, uh, called a Shrike, these two models, and they're air-driven, propeller-driven cars here. They would use this propeller and run off this simple 049 engine, you can see here. It's a, a little uh, diesel-type engine. You would fill it with fuel here, and uh, this was your... This was your adjustment, your throttle adjustment, and you would put a little globe, a little uh, attachment on here with a battery, and then you would give this a couple spins. There was even a little spring here that you could wrap the spring around like this, let it go, and uh, and this way it would uh, start it that way. Let me see if I can get that one here without it slipping. Here we go. And that it would start up and, you know, usually if you're doing it in the winter time, you get fuel on your hands and then this sharp edge would wind up contacting you to get cuts. It was a lot of fun, you know, but uh, once you got these running right, you could just give it a quick turn like this and you could get it running. And uh, and then you would place it down and on these two little here, these two little points, there was a wire just like this, like a V, and that would attach to your line and that would run it in a circle. And then you could time it and it was just a lot of fun, you know, and and uh, these two here, I have a red one too. Again, a lot of my stuff is packed away, but um, this one here is missing the windshield. There's a little windshield, which a, a lot of them do miss, uh, but you could see the wheels they had. We'd lubricate them up to make sure that they would run nice nice and smooth and uh just very interesting you know and again this was a a, a cock shrike they were cheap to make they made a ton of these and uh, these used to get crushed up and you know after a while you get bored of running them in a circle you would send them over ramps and things like that and that's why there aren't too many of them around today even though they made okay, what you're about to see now is the epitome of cool this is like steve mcqueen was this is like this was cool i mean even even today, this holds up as being really cool. And let me show you what this is. This is put out by a, a um, testers, but it was a Cox motor, and uh, it had it was a Sprite kind of sponsored it. And you can see here, this this is the guy that got it in, in Pennsylvania at what time? And uh, I can't see the date on here. Uh, 71, 1971. How cool is that? Okay, this is like a time capsule because uh, let me show you what this is. This is a tether car. Again, this is the cool stuff that we grew up with that, you know, I know video games are cool, but they, nothing compares with this stuff back then. Here's all the paperwork that came with it. Uh, you know, you would have to read it. And again, it was sponsored by, you know, Sprite was the uh, stickers that came on, but not, a lot of the stickers wouldn't be put on the car, but you can see what they look like. These are all the stickers you could put on the car. I never like to put stickers on the car, uh, but it shows you where to put them, okay? Uh, over here, here's the accessories that you would need to get the car started. You know, a, a little wrench for the engine, uh, battery connector wires, and then, you know, it came with a little, remember these little dry cell batteries they used to make? And the model engine fuel, and you could, uh, for $3.25, you could send this in, they'll send you one of them. Uh, <clears throat> again, it gave you a manual that you should read, and how to uh, operate the vehicle. The parts of the vehicle you know this was all this is good stuff this trained you for when you had to do work on your car later on in life and now nobody can work on their cars because they don't want you to um and it, it showed you exactly you know if you had to take it apart or trouble servicing really good so let me show you the car here it is it uh and again this is like i said this is new old stock let's check this out uh pull it out of here carefully Look at that. Is that not, is that not cool? I love these open wheel cars to begin with, but just look at this. I mean, how cool. And here's your little 049 motor, your fuel tank. Here's your little adjustment back here. And you would, you know, give it a spin. Oh, look at that. That is just so cool. And over here is the accessories. Again, here's, uh, you know, your wrench to work on the motor which kids would all work on a motor. Here was that wire I was telling you about that you would hook up and uh, and attach the line to to uh, drag it around. Here's uh, the accessories that came with it, some of the line, uh, a little pull cord, if um, a little nail that you could drive into the pavement and have it spin around. But uh, you could take a pull cord and wrap it around. There was a little, uh, this little here. See that little 
uh, it's like a pulley would attach to here and then you could pull the pull cord to get it to start and like but once you knew what you were doing you could start it by just spinning it like this and once you knew how to prime it but I'll show, let me show you this car in a okay, different way. Okay, here we go. Our time machine going back to 1971. I mean, uh, just think about having this as a kid if you're 10, 11 years old, 12 years old, and you went out with your friends, and you'd all be gathered around, and you'd have the fuel and the battery, and then you'd get this thing running, and, you know, you'd be so anxious to, to spin this thing around. And, I mean, look at this. This is something that I don't know why. I don't know why that uh, this wouldn't even interest the youth of today. <laughs> They have no interest in stuff like this, but I think this is the coolest thing since sliced bread. 1971 Sprite race car, formula car. Just beautiful, isn't it? So there we have it, a 50-year travel back in time and uh, a nice look at some vintage tether cars. Let me know in the comments if you ever messed around with any hobbies like this and what was your favorite hobby, because we all like to know, you know, California was the mecca. California was the place because they had nice weather all year round. They had the best hob. They had the best, uh, you know, model airplanes and model cars because they can go out there. Here in the, the Northeast, you know, we were limited. We, you know, even though we were out there on Christmas Day, it was freezing out. We'd be running these things in the snow. And so that's why you don't see too many lasting out here. But uh, let me know if you had that kind of hobby or what kind of hobbies you were into back then. Anyway, like I said, a short one today. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.